LinkedIn, we are on here. Let's go. You know, he challenged me. He said, you should meet two or three people every day. We're talking about how to level up on LinkedIn and engagement. We need to go give her the idea that being open to opportunity. We're all dealing with challenges, and, and, but how do you overcome that? Master Connector with Steve Spiro and Cameron Toth is live on air. Yes, we are. Here we go. Here we go. So everybody has a story to tell. If you don't believe you have a story to tell. We're going to try to correct that for you today because you do have an amazing story. Do you know how to tell it well? That is a serious question, but we're going to get into all of that. Steve, my main man, you ready to start us off on this topic today? Absolutely, 100%. Hey, what's going on, friends? Steve Spear, the master connector coming at you live and direct. So here's a question. How do you engage clients and build better connections. Would you like to illustrate a point in a more vivid, memorable way, and increasing the chances that the message is understood and remembered? You know, stories have the capacity to capture the attention of the audience, uh, of the audience evoke emotions and motivate action. Uh, additionally, you know, stories allow us to bring abstract concepts to life and make them more tangible, making it easier for the listeners to see the point being made. You know, we, we all have a story to tell, every one of us. And you've got to believe, I'm telling you, 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 you've got to believe that, you're, that yours is worthy of, of being told and being heard. You know, I found that being authentic and making sure to be others focused when crafting and telling my story has really helped me build a, a, a pretty big community. So you combine that with some kind of grit or, you know, to overcome obstacles. And man, that's a powerful, powerful message. And that's why uh, movies like Rudy, Rocky, Braveheart, and so on and so forth are so popular. You know, today's topic and guest is going to captivate you. And she's amazing. And so I can't wait to, to dig into this topic. I know we've got a lot. Cameron, great job with some of the you know, the graphics uh, to kind of hype up the show. You did an amazing job. But if you're ready for, for an introduction here, and you know how Cameron, do, you know how Cameron does, man, he is, he is our Michael Buffer here. But so just type in the, in the chat, who this, okay? Uh, H-O-O-H-O-D-I-S, who this, okay? And we're going to have Cameron bring up uh, our guest. Cameron, I'll turn it to you, sir. Appreciate you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm going to throw Amy up onto the screen here. She is going to be the uh, the backdrop for this amazing uh, bio intro. Amy, thank you for being here. Amy Blackshot has made a career offering stories as a service. From her degree in film to her three decades spent branding products, places, and people to founding her strategic writing practice, Amy has always understood the power of weaving a compelling tail. These days, she's a social media ghostwriter, yep, that's a thing, who helps founders craft their stories to communicate and connect better, magnifying their reach and impact. Amy also writes engaging original and authentic career stories for her clients to position them for success and change how others perceive pay partner with and promote them. As a longtime leadership contributor for Forbes, Amy covers personal transformation and its impact on career growth. She also regularly creates and shares original content through a popular Illuminate Me and Momentum newsletters and active social media channels. Please welcome to the show, the explorific, the amazing storyteller, Amy Blackshot. Thank you for having me. That was quite the introduction. Wow. wow. We try. We try. <laughs> so, Steve, get us jump, jumped into this conversation here. And I, and I just want to shout out Yolanda. Uh, Yolanda, I just finished booking my, my plane tickets. I'm headed to uh, Dallas. Uh, and Frisco's right outside of uh, Dallas. I'm actually, I think I'm staying at um, uh, 
Marriott in Frisco. So I'm excited. We're going to have to set up lunch day. I'm going with my daughter to connect, Steve. Um, big nice. uh, conference for Master. Start of, so Alex yeah. is Start headed down connected. there. So we should be able to connect with a uh, <laughs> Master Networks community person in person. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that, Yolanda. We're going to have to set that up. And Matthew Stein is checking in from NYC. If you are watching this, don't be a LinkedIn lurker. Make sure you're getting into the comments. Make sure you're letting us know a little bit about your story. And that starts with or can start with where you're from. Let us know. So before we get into, into the question here, I just want to set up and tell a little bit of our story. I know, Cameron, you put a little video together and a, you had a little, a little written word on, on the story. So as you guys know, shy, introverted, born and raised monks, picked on, bullied, but uh, went into the advertising industry eventually. Uh, and then throughout, throughout that, also got into the martial arts, a couple of black belts, and eventually met through a very successful entrepreneur, a... Uh, a, I met somebody who was a very successful entrepreneur who took me on his wing, caught me on a path of self-development, books, audios, and networking. And that networking journey kind of started. And what happened was, uh, you know, started to go to different networking groups and wound up uh, through a good friend, Rob Genovese. He got introduced to Master Networks and met Cameron at the very, very, very first Master Networks I, I went to. I believe it was the very first or one of the first. Anyway, we, we kind of exchanged information and had a follow-up call and and um got a, got a chance to, to learn a little bit about cameron uh, i was impressed with him and it turned out i found out he was doing a show called the biz dev live and wound up checking out that show he actually invited me on and i was so impressed with what he was doing outside of the uh event catering staffing business that he does but we you know I, throughout this whole linkedin journey i think i started in 08 i wound up finding out later on about two, roughly two and a half years ago that they had a LinkedIn live thing. And I know Cameron was doing live through YouTube. So I put my application in it to, and for, for just for kicks and giggles, but I got, I got approved. And then I'm like, what the heck am I going to do with this? It was completely over my head. What, I mean, listen, shy introverted kid, master connector, now, now public speaker and doing shows. I mean, it just felt so out of, so out of the, you know, out of the, you know, out of the realm of possibility. So I reached out to Cameron and I said, hey, um, what do you know about LinkedIn Live? I'm like, he's like, dude, man, I'm trying to get on LinkedIn. And I said, I got to prove. He's like, I said, dude, you, should, you know, he said, you should, we should collaborate. I'm like, man, I was hoping you should yes. say that. So <laughs> that's what happened. I mean, pretty much that's the story. And and uh, that was in November 2020, start, kicked it off. And today is our 104th episode. We've had amazing guests, Amy being one of those guests. So that's a little bit of our story, uh, you know, to how the, you know, this whole, whole thing came together since it's about storytelling. I felt like. And I, and I, I love that, Steve, that you had it because I was like, at that point, I was like, I can't get on this LinkedIn live thing. So it's a, <laughs> you know, timing plays a role in everything, right? There's a little bit of luck. And so it was, it was a good thing for, for me and Steve. It gave me that extra emphasis because partnering with somebody is scary. Talk about, you know, challenging stories that you've heard of uh, through your life, right? Partnering with somebody is always a little and we are so different too right so different like <laughs> night and day oil and vinegar i mean we get along but there's times where it's like i think i probably annoy cameron cameron annoys me sometimes it's partnership right i mean it's like a marriage right it's it's never going to be perfect but it's 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 a match maiden in heaven for sure you know no doubt about it so anyway we don't want the show to be about that but i wanted to just use that an opportunity to tell the story and, and Amy, uh, you know, now we're going to get into, you know, asking you some questions. But before we do that, I want the community again, we're LinkedIn, uh, we're the LinkedIn participants. So put in hashtag story. And again, if you have a story you want to put in the comments, feel free to put something in there. We love when people are participating. But Amy, we'd love for you to tell us in a couple of minutes or less, okay, your story and you know, because you're a storyteller, we know that you're going to do a great job of, of sort of illustrating what a what kind of good looks like, if you will. So, no no pressure, just, just, no just, just put her on the spot, Steve. Put her on the spot. <laughs> you know, she's all on, you know, but she's a pro. Yeah. Well, I'm good at other people's stories, but I will tell you, mine begins as a very shy child. No one that meets me today ever believes that. But I, I was literally the kid in the corner writing the stories, observing, watching other people, kind of incorporating that, like a creative kid for sure. Now, 
I've had a very nonlinear career path as kind of indicated in my bio. So I was in branding and advertising. I was in tourism. I've done all sorts of things. But what I found was the common thread of all these things was that I was able to pull out, kind of see the best in a product, in a company, in a destination, um, and now a person and shine a light on what makes that special and what that makes that compelling to draw others to them. So uh, I've always had a knack for doing that. I'm a very curious person. And that curiosity, the observation, that shy little Amy who was super creative but was always watching was super sensitive, very empathetic. All of those things that, you know, I was called too sensitive as a child now serve me really well. I'm able to take that and make it my superpower. The listening, the observing, the taking in of information and translating that back into something that is meaningful and draws others to somebody else and lets them see kind of the best is what I do. And so I'm delighted though, that now I get to do that with other human beings and work one-on-one with folks and have partnerships often with people that are very different than me. But I think that that is the magic because you want to work with someone who's complementary to you, not identical to you. And um, I get to do that every day with fascinating (laughs) people from all over the world. No doubt. That's great. And Cameron jumped in to shake his head because like, yeah, Steve and Cameron are way different from each other. (laughs) And listen, listen, you know, because Steve will often say, oh, you know, I get, you know, maybe he gets on my nerves or I get up. But, you know, I never feel that. I always feel like, Steve's a beast. And, you know, yes. if, if you've ever, if you've ever uh, done something with Steve, for those that are lucky to, you'll see immediately, he is a, a communication monster, absolute beast. Um, the amount of emails and one-to-one meetings that he's able to jump into, I just sit there and my, my head's on a swivel, like just thinking about it, because it's like, uh, I, I can't believe uh, that, that, you know, he, he's got all this stuff going on. We lost, we lost Amy. So hopefully she's jumping back. In. Yeah. Maybe it's just technical challenge. I was the one with the technical challenges before. <laughs> I appreciate the kind words. Listen, we, we are looking to monetize the show, but that, that, that compliment uh, is definitely more than worthy. And more, more she's there. Sorry. I don't know what happened. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not I'm dipping. I'm like, ah, <laughs> no worries. No worries. Mm-hmm. Well, you said something, Amy, before, which again, thank you, Cameron, for the kind words, but you, you know, listen, you're a beast as well. I mean, what you do, and I was happy to be blessed to be able to go to the new command center for, for tote event staffing and photo shoot there. And you have a shit, you're, you're number one, you know, Margaret, and just you're, you're a beast as well in, in your own way. And, you know, family, he's got 17 kids. I don't know how he does everything he does. So we all, we all have our strengths, right? But Amy, you said something before, and that is, and I, I have a signature to talk about it, which is in our weakness, there's power, right? And mm. You know, it's it's turning the things that we have that were challenges, issues, weaknesses, insecurities, whatever, and then making them into something that becomes, like you said, your superpowers. So kudos to you that you're able to do that because other people, not everyone does that. Not every you know, some people, they just they wallow in that. You know, they kind of they they, they just you know they get off on you know being you know the the woe is me mentality. And you know, I love when people you know big. I'm a big you know. Be a victor, not a victim kind of, you know, m- right. mentality, right? Mm-hmm. Very cool. Well, good stuff. So we want to get into this, and this is a this is this particular question is near and dear to my to my heart. And I think Cameron also shares in it, and the power of words. So ha- uh, hashtag words community, <laughs> uh, and we're going to start to get into this next section of of this topic, which you know you say, and this is you know straight from you from you, Amy, right? You say that stories we tell ourselves are the most important words you speak. Mm-hmm. Can you dig into that and tell us why that is? Well, and, and Amy, before you jump into that, because I because I think that's really good, right? Stephanie Lewis jumped in here and I love the fact that she did. She says, I help postmenopausal women with pain and autoimmune, autoimmune issues find relief through diet and lifestyle changes. So as you're answering this question, I'd love you to talk to our audience, Yolanda, Matthew, everybody here, you know, what are ways in instances like this where we can begin to tell our stories? Because I I don't know Stephanie Lewis and she's telling me that she helps post-menopausal women. But I think one of the things that you're probably going to talk about in terms of words is that's great that that's, that's what she does. 
but we we do business with people we know, like, and trust, and stories are a big part of that. And so what can Stephanie do and our folks here do to sort of help people immediately get to know the type of people they are so we know to reach out to them and, and partnership and that sort of thing? Sure. And there's, by a lot, today, there's a lot to unpack yeah. there. <laughs> and I, I just want to just shout out, today is, uh, I think it's National Women's Day. Am I, international. Am I international, yeah. It's international. So, so uh, shout out to the ladies um, and, uh, you know, Bless that uh, you, you are all in our lives. So, Ben, and, and we, we have a lot, a pretty large uh, ladies uh, population in terms of our audience and our community. So, we appreciate everybody. But let's get into that topic, Amy. We, I don't want to sidetrack us here, but I just want to acknowledge that before the show is too deep. Sure. Okay. So, words have power. Uh, now, as a writer, I firmly believe this with every fiber of my being because words have the power to do good and words have the power to do not so good. I mean, a lot of what's on social media, for instance, isn't necessarily what I would call using words for good, but words have power to build people up. Words have power to communicate and connect. Words have power to help us feel better about ourselves. So when I say that um, the stories we tell ourselves are the most important words we speak, it's because it really starts internally. You know, how are we referring to ourselves? What are we telling ourselves? So for instance, for years, I never felt comfortable saying I'm a writer. I mean, today it's like, duh, right? This is what I do and I, I've done it for years. But if you have a hard time sort of identifying and telling yourself things like I'm this, I'm that, or you fill your head with things like I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I, you know, I'm just a fill in the blank, you know, that that adds up over time and those stories circulate again and again and again in your head. And I hate that word just, that just word, mm -hmm. using that in something they're doing, take it. I love that. Yeah, it's, it's, it can be really detrimental. And sometimes the stories that we tell ourselves are words that are echoed or spoken by unsuspecting people in our lives. Like as a child, you might have a parent or a teacher say something that they don't think is really whatever. But you hold on to that, like so, like a label, like you're too sensitive or you're too loud or you're too whatever. And then you come to, and they say it in such a way that it's it's a negative, you're too much. Um, and those are the things like I was talking about earlier. If you flip those around, that can be your superpower, but it starts within and it starts with the stories you tell yourself. So if you tell yourself, I am enough, I am talented, I am worthy, I am a writer. It wasn't until I actually admitted that to myself and could say that with confidence to myself that anyone else would believe it, right? Because if you don't believe it, why is anybody else going to believe it? It really starts within. So those stories we tell ourselves are the most powerful words that we're going to speak. And once we have that story in such a way that we believe it and it's empowering and it, it, it aligns with who we are and what we do best then we can share that with others and there will be no incongruence. It will be sort of, yes, this is who I am. That's awesome. That's great. And by the way, I got to say, I love your animation. You you might have a, a little Italian in you because I see you're using your hands a lot. So uh, sure yeah, I'm Sicilian. So yeah, there's All right, that. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. That's awesome. No, I, I agree. And, and, you know, it's interesting, right? So we're, your, your focus of that, which I, I love, was on kind of how you self-affirm yourself or don't, right? And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm big, I do self-talk every morning and, you know, it's very specific on health goals, marital goals, relational goals, vision goals. There's a whole bunch of the spiritual stuff, it, you know, exactly of who I want to be. And it's interesting, two, three, four years later, since I started doing that, I'm becoming those things. It's amazing. It's exactly, it's just words are power, like you said, Words mm -hmm. are seeds. And, they're, you know, whether you That's plant right. good seed or bad seed, you, you plant a, a corn seed, you're going to get corn come up. You're not going to get apples, right? So whatever you plant, <laughs> right. whatever you sow, you reap, right? And those words are seeds. So make sure mm -hmm. you're, you're being very conscious. I heard it said, you know, if, you, if, you, if what you said was to come to fruition, we, for real, we'd be pretty careful about what we say, right? You know, when we say stuff mm -hmm. like, oh, man, my head is killing me. I don't know if you want to say that, right? <laughs> you know, things like that, yes. right? Um, yes. Cameron yes. had mentioned one thing, and, and 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 then we want to kind of move on unless you have something to add. But Cameron 
had mentioned something about, you know, kind of your story in terms of your career and what you do. And, you know, I know I see uh, Parker on here. I appreciate that, Parker, uh, being on here, um, you know, being, a, a, you know, in the financial services industry, right? You know, whatever we do, the, the, you, you can have different perspectives, right? I, I heard a story about a man who was walking on a construction site. And he looked at a guy who was who was putting he was laying down bricks, and he said mm-hmm. to the to the man, "Hey, what are you doing?" He said, "I'm laying bricks down. I'm a bricklayer." He okay. Walked to another guy down, a little bit down, you know, down further. He said, "What are you doing?" And he said, "Well, I'm putting up a wall." And then the third guy, same exact task. What are you doing, sir? He said, "I'm I'm helping build a cathedral," and it's mm-hmm. it's the exact same task, but how are you articulating it? And you know. Do, do does your story do what you do have an impact right is it powerful right versus you know i i sell insurance well maybe i help save li- lives or whatever whatever again i, I don't you know what i'm saying i help change lives and people's you know whatever okay I, that's not my job right now to, to to tell you what your your story should be but you should be conscious of that right so. most definitely that's that that's perspective right too it's your mindset how that works and i think it speaks to being being intentional with your words right yeah. that they do have power so the, you should be choosy and choose wisely with those words because they they can have a it, it, obviously an impact in how you see what your role is but also mm-hmm. how you impact the greater world around you no doubt so I know uh, Cameron's cued me up here. She's like, she's like, tell us, tell us. Okay. <laughs> so we want to we want to talk about this and this this I, I can't wait to get into because I really believe there's there's some great value here. So listen good to what Amy's about to speak about. But we want you to talk to us about the, what you call the power trifecta. The, the, mm-hmm. It looks like it's uh, it's it's clarity, consistency, and discipline. So talk, speak to that a little bit if you can. Sure. So. It sounds very boring. Everybody's looking for a hack or how do I do this? Do, and I swear, this is what works. The, I call it the power, tri, power trifecta because it does work. So the first is clarity. Clarity of message, of your offering, of your positioning, of your ideal client, of what you do and why it matters is essential. Uh, you put out a piece of writing. You have to have a reason behind that. If you are unclear you'll confuse people. And if you confuse people, you will lose people. And you'll lose people that you want to do business with because they're like, I don't have time for this. I don't get it. What is she trying to say? Who does she serve? What is she about? What, you know? So clarity is essential. That's always the building block, the, the foundation. And with writing, I like to say the clarity, you need to have one clear takeaway for every piece of content that you put out there. A lot of people try to jam in too much they're very excited or they have a point of view on everything. And it's like, just narrow the focus. So that's clarity. The second is consistency. And this is the thing with writing and with content in particular, it's a long game. And those who are consistent, who show up and consistently put out, uh, regularly share their wisdom, those are the ones that you know will win in the long run because it everybody has a lot going on in their worlds, right? I mean, particularly on social media, your attention span is like this, right? It, things come through your feeds, different things. And, you know, it's not enough to capture somebody's attention once. You want to repeatedly keep showing up, keep sharing your message, keep sharing that clarity of who you serve, what you do, because eventually people will notice. They'll say, oh, okay, well, that she keeps talking about these three topics or she keeps, you know, showing up here. And I kind of get that. And I will tell people to say, yeah, I'm doing this, but I don't know if anyone's really listening. Well, people do. I trust me. There's always somebody out there who needs to hear what you have to say, but you need to say it repeatedly. You think you're saying it all the time, but somebody might just see it once or twice or whatever. So you need to keep showing up consistently. And I I just want to just jump in if you don't mind. And, you know, Cameron gave me a little bit of, of mentorship on this one the other day. I'm going to shout out Cameron on this one. He, you know, because our pillars of our show is to 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 be authentic, to connect authentically, to be others focused, be a go giver, to um, have the grit to overcome obstacles, and then build a community and growing your connections. Those are our four pillars. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, we don't speak about that a lot, you know, enough, right? And and so he's right, and I, I realized that. And so so it's just you know you you think you you say it once or twice, right? Um, you know, a guy, you know, a woman said, 
said to uh, to the, her husband, "Hey, uh, you don't love me." He said, "I told you once, you know." And no, you got to say it a lot. You got to say it often, right? And um, I said it in two thousand four. What I yeah, got to say it every year? <laughs> exactly. Right. But uh, but anyway, it's consistency. I love I love what you're saying there because it's so true. And I'm I'm starting to see that now. I mean, we I created the Master Connector brand, which is more just a persona, and I I believe it's starting to take some traction. People are starting to, you know, but it, but it happens over time. And you know, so you gotta have patience. So consistency is going to require patience, right? You can't just expect it after a few weeks or a month. To, to really take hold. It's got to be consistent, right? I'll, I'll let right. you continue. I just wanted to throw in that. Yeah, no, the, absolutely. And you, you're seeing how that all kind of comes into play. I, the last bit is discipline. So there's discipline to make sure that you have the consistency, right? That you continue to show up and share your wisdom. Um, but discipline also speaks to what you are sharing, right? So we've all known those people on LinkedIn who, you know, they, they're sharing tons of stuff, and, but you might go, well, that's great, or I like that, or that's inspirational. But, but what does she do, right? <laughs> what if you if you have a scattered approach, right? Again, you're going to confuse people, or they're not really clear. So I use discipline that, yeah. a way to make sure that you stay in your zone of genius, right? And when I work with my social media ghostwriting clients, I will have them pick three buckets, right? that we keep those their stuff aligned to these three buckets. Now, it can be something broad like leadership, say, or entrepreneurship, right? So a lot can fit under those buckets. But we what we don't want is one day they're talking about being a founder. The next day they're talking about the breakfast. The next day they're talking about blockchain. The next day they're talking, you know, so it's this whole like, what what is this? Because ideally with your content and anything that you put out, you want to make it super easy for your intended audience to instantly understand who you are, what you're about, what matters most, who you serve, and does that apply to them? Are they part of that world? You want them to self-select yes, or if that's not really who they are about or what they want, that they can just drop away. That's helpful too. But you need to have the discipline to stay in your wheelhouse, to stay in those things and consistently show up and share in those topic areas where you are an expert. Then people will see you as one. Absolutely, for sure. That's that's awesome. No, I, I love that, and and I love the, I love what you're saying because again, similar to what you're what you're speaking about, you know, it, with our show, we had some we had some shows that were so off the mark, and and Cameron said, "Hey, this is before we came up with the pillars." He's like, "We need to kind of because we we did one on like recovery, as in like, you know, uh, AA and A." you know, OA, which nothing wrong with that. We have family members and people that, you know, that, that, that's been incredible for, but it was a little bit way outside of what we were about on the show. So yeah. being disciplined to staying in your wheelhouse and is, is so important. So appreciate that. So we want to talk about, cause we're getting to the tail end of this show here. We want to talk about don'ts. And do you have anything? And so hashtag don'ts community, yes. um, D O N T S. You don't have to worry about the apostrophe. But any don'ts that you recommend that, that kind of that, that we look to avoid in regards to telling your story, communication, et cetera. So this this is going to sound counterintuitive, but your story isn't about you. Ultimately, you want it to be about your intended audience. Right. So it is about you. So you can say what I do, what I, you know, whatever. But you want to talk about why it's relevant to that intended audience. Why should they care? And you want to make it really, really easy for them to instantly understand why they should and why they do. So that's one tip. I would say the other thing is um, avoid being too salesy, right? With your content. No, nobody likes that. It, and everyone can see through that sort of like, oh, it's another self-promotional post. Who cares? <laughs> like, it's not like, I don't want that. I would say serve, don't sell. And that's not mine. It's from a good friend of mine, but I love you know, bringing that up because it's an easy way to remember that you're there to serve the audience with some sort of valuable insight or experience that they can use in their lives. It's not about selling yourself to them. And I would say the other thing is um, in, to engage, right? So if you go to the trouble to put something together, to share something, and somebody actually comments on that, right? They take time and attention out of their day to do that acknowledge that that is somebody who is interested and you want to you know 
the idea between, you know, of social media, I think, is that it's not a one-way thing. It's is you want to start a conversation. That's the social part of social media. And if somebody engages on your post and writes something or send you a message or something, you, you want to acknowledge that. At least say thank you or maybe, you know, that's great. I mean, you think. And then they know that you saw that. You know, so few people actually engage with others. It baffles my mind. These are people who are interested. So make sure that you acknowledge that and don't, don't just post and ghost. Right. Don't yeah. just put something up and walk away. Absolutely. No doubt. Yeah, I, I love everything you said. Obviously, that, that's why we're having you on our show, because you're so aligned with what we're talking about. Being others focused in that story. I've also heard it say, you know, you kind of you kind of you're the superhero of your story. But the superheroes are about saving other people's lives. Right. It's not about them pounding their chest, but it's because right. they're right. And so, again, others focused. I love that. Yeah. So last question we want to get into as we close and then maybe at the tail end of this, you could tell the, the community best way to reach you and anything else that you feel like is irrelevant. But we want to speak about benefits. So hashtag benefits. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what, in your opinion, Amy, what's the benefit or, or some of the benefits of becoming a good storyteller? Um, well, you know, when you can tell a story, you'll draw your intended audience to you instead of selling them and kind of, you know, pushing yourself on them, they will naturally be attracted to you. You'll be a, like a magnet for those people, right? And that comes into play because then people will seek you out. You are the expert. And that's another benefit is people will see you and it positions you as an expert, uh, draws others to you. It makes very clear your unique point of view, which again, can draw the right people to you or repel the ones that aren't. Um, and I, I think more than anything, it's about the no like, and trust factor, right? When you're sharing things and you share a story well, people go, oh, okay, I really like the way he thinks. Um, I want to align with this person in some way, whether it is to connect with them, to follow what they have to say, to work with them ideally. You know, it, you're going to put that out into the world and you're going to get that back. And stories connect with people on an emotional level. They, they resonate with people on a very deep level. Facts don't have a way of doing that. I'm sorry, they just don't. As much as you want to think you're a logical person, I'm sorry, you are an imperfect emotional human being. And that is what will ultimately you'll form a connection over. So stories are an excellent way to do that. That's great. And, and you know, the other thing I've heard in, in terms of stories, and then we're going to wa want you to tell people the best way to reach you. But stories, a couple of things. Number one, it, it's not as effective if you pound your chest about why your services are you are good. But if you tell a story about a client that that use your services and, and what they felt or the benefit, what they got from your services, that's way more effective. It's essentially a, a testimony that you just created yourself by telling that story. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're also putting that potential client in that person's shoes, maybe even in your story, so to speak. Right. Because they they relate. Wow. OK, those are some challenges that I'm dealing with. I also mm -hmm. found storytelling is a good way to correct people. But, but instead of telling him you this, you're you're wrong, you shouldn't do this, you can say, hey, I, you know, it's interesting what you're dealing with. I, rem I remember, tell, think, I think about a story of somebody I knew who was in a similar situation and I suggested this to that person and 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 they did this and it helped them, right? So now I'm, I'm being able to, without saying you should do this, I said I did it with this person, I had a similar challenge and it's better people skills and you, people seem to take your, your your information and receive it easier then it's so confrontational about you should do this, you should do that. So just some things right. I've seen as well. A absolutely. No one likes being told what to do. But Never. if they hear a sort of a relevant story that they can then do, it's like, oh, actually, that, that could be helpful to me. They'll, it'll be much better received. You're right. For sure. For sure. Well, tell us, tell tell our community. We, we love to have you on here, Amy. You're amazing. Tell us the best way. Tell everyone the best way to reach you, connect with you. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll definitely have to have you on again for sure. Oh, uh, well, thank you for having me. And um, I am on most of the social media platforms, but LinkedIn is my heart and soul. I am here and you can find me here. You can follow me here. You can send a connection request to, uh, request to me as well. Uh, on LinkedIn, I also have a weekly newsletter. It comes out on Wednesday. So this morning's was the latest edition. Uh, that's called Momentum. And you can um, sign up for that here. Off of this platform, I am also on Twitter and Instagram, and I have another newsletter through Substack called Illuminate Me, and I'd love it if you'd follow me there. And if you're interested in learning more about my services, you can hit my website, which is amyblashka.com, 
and everything else is connected there with uh, my socials and my newsletters. So if you want one-stop shopping, I would start there and um, you can reach out if you'd like to work together or interested in learning more. Fantastic. All right, so I just wanted Good to stuff. highlight the newsletter that you put out this morning, just so people can sort of see that. And then do me a favor uh, while I'm showing this off, uh, Amy, type the new, the, um, the web address into the private chat box there and I'll post that on the screen. Uh, and then we will lead out everybody with Crush It. Let me just throw this uh, on the screen. So and we want to recognize our sponsors too, right? Right, sir? Yeah, yes. And I also wanted, uh, you said that you, if folks wanted to go to the other spot, what was that sub? Substack, yes, yeah, I can put that yeah, in. Yeah, that's comment. not a technology I'm familiar with or a website. I'm with. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, an email newsletter. So you can go there, you can plug in your email and I those go out every Sunday morning. You'll get a weekly dose there. Um, and let me add that to the private chat and you'll get that. That's my Substack. All right, there we and go. So then, there's four ways to master the one thing best leaders can do in challenging times. So uh, anybody that's linked on, link, on LinkedIn, you probably get a ton of newsletter requests. I say no to most of them just because most of them come to me unsolicited and I don't even know if they're even publishing them that Amy is somebody that actually publishes to their newsletter. It's not just a, a gimme on the email address and all that kind of stuff. So I really, really highly suggest that you subscribe to her newsletter. As you can see, I am right uh, up in that little thing right there. Boom, right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 20,000. That's pretty impressive. Definitely a reason uh, for folks to follow you in terms of telling those stories. Um, and then in terms of the website, let me just get this up for folks to follow in the post. And then as Steve talked about, I will talk about my company for one brief second because Toth Event Staffing does make this possible. So we'll shout out my crew there. We just uh, did a registration event and uh, January. That was a lot of fun. So you see us there and uh, that makes it uh, possible for me to do fun. I was actually running over here late uh, from doing <laughs> activities, getting payroll processed and all that good stuff. Uh, we always like to uh, lead out of the show. The Your same staff way. appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we, we always count down to crush it. So folks that are watching with us, you know what to do. Uh, you're going to count down in the chat. Uh, Amy, we're going to put our hands up like this. We're going to count down from five and then we will see you next week. Same bad channel. Uh, we have on with us next week, Nate Berman, no apologies, oh. UBU, uh, which is a great topic. Uh, he's great. He's great. Definitely in lines. With <laughs> yeah, he's, he's he speaks whatever he wants to speak. He's just uh, the, the no filter there. So, but uh, it's going to be great. But listen, before we crush it, we just want to tell you again uh, to all the ladies, women, you know, we, we appreciate you. We celebrate you today. Thank you for being here. Everybody, our whole entire community, you are amazing. Again, our mission is to be the light, uplift, inspire, encourage. Make sure you share this out. Make sure you're, you're telling your friends and send this link to next week's. Links already available. Go to masterconnector.show if you want to see and register for the, the next uh, upcoming five or six weeks we have coming up. It's going to be incredible. So we appreciate you. Make sure you go inspire somebody today. And uh, so, again, Amy, thank you so much. We're going we're gonna to now count down a crush it. And uh, hopefully now with my technology, I could actually lead this out. So, are you ready? Let's go. Five, four, four three, three, two, two. one. One crush it. Crush it. All right. And in the uh in the theme of uh telling our story here, I got that video that we put up on LinkedIn. Enjoy everybody. We'll see you next week. Same bad time, same bad time. <laughs>